Could you use some good news this year at Christmas? That's what we're going to be talking about on Flourishment today. Flourishment is sponsored by Access More. Today, I have the privilege and joy of having with me international speaker and best-selling author of over 50 books, Pam Farrell. And she has a new bestseller in addition to the one you may already know about, Men Are Like Waffles, Women Are Like Spaghetti. She has a new one called Discovering Good News in John, and she's here to discuss good news at Christmas today. Welcome, Pam. It's always a delight to chat with you. Oh, good to see you, Tina. God bless you and Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you and to everyone who is listening or watching, depending on where you're catching this interview. Can you tell us, Pam, why people might need good news at Christmas time? You know, um, it's interesting. My husband and I have been in ministry several decades now, and the need for um, people to get on our counseling and relationship coaching um, schedule always goes up at Thanksgiving to the new year, that window. And I think one of the reasons why is we have this dream for a, like a hallmark, you know, wonderful, uh, idealistic Christmas or holiday season. And if our life doesn't match that in any way, depression can set in so easily or maybe we're seeing our extended family that we normally don't see, but now we're going to see them and maybe things are not so easy with those family members, uh, maybe even toxic. Maybe there's memories or things that come up from our past that like hit us uh, upside the head and we're just like, where did that emotion come from? Well, it was triggered because, oh, we anticipate uh, interaction maybe with somebody who's not easy to love. Uh, so there's all kinds of reasons why we might have this mix of emotion and we need some God good news to get us through some hope and joy. We, we need just like the angels announce, behold, I bring you good news of great joy. We need that at the holiday season just to manage our own emotional well-being. And um, all those relationships, most people will have a packed in relationship schedule from Thanksgiving to the new year. And sometimes it's full of, you know, wonderful, fun and festivities. And sometimes it's a mix of like, oh, I'm kind of a, have some anxieties here. So we need God's perspective when it comes to the holiday season. I think finances can be particularly oh. stressful at Christmas, don't you? I think that tends yes. to be for us with, we, we live on commission. So that can sometimes be the slowest time of the year for us. And yet it's the time where you have the most expenses. And I don't think I'm the only one in that situation where you have kind of let the holidays creep up on you. And then all of a sudden you end up having to charge everything. And you're kind of wondering, I, I really hope we're going to have enough money next year to pay this off. And it can be really stressful for people. What would you say to those who are experiencing financial stress or maybe health stress? That's another thing that happens more during this time of year. We can have bad news about our health because there's a lot more disease issues happening in the cold winter months and the times when people get inside. So what would you say to people who are experiencing financial or health stress? During... I hear you on both of those. I've uh, been there, done that, right? <laughs> um, the health thing is like really close to my heart because for a decade, um, I usually get hit with some upper respiratory ridiculousness uh, during that December season. And one year I was so sick um, that I gathered my family together and I said, here's the deal. I've only been out of bed for two days. We're not going to be able to do everything that mom usually does. And all my kids were in high school at this point and one was in college. And so I made a list of everything I typically did for the family uh, during the holiday season. And I said, which one of these things are most important to each one of you? And we'll try to make that the priority so that uh, we 
have the Christmas feel, but not everything is going to get checked off on this list. And um, it was hilarious because the only thing all three boys said that they wanted was to string lights on the outside of the house. Oh. Like everything else, they didn't care. I'm like, why have I been do working so hard? these years. <laughs> so honest, sometimes we just need to have an honest conversation. Like the good news might be, Hey mom, uh, you can take a few of those things off your list and do a little self care this holiday season and your family will survive, maybe even thrive or maybe delegate. Maybe the good news is like, let's spread the joy out. So we all have a piece of the Christmas holiday, you know, festivities and responsibilities. Um, and the same thing, one year was so tight financially. This is before I started writing um, all those books. And uh, my husband was a pastor and we had littles in the house. Um, you know, they were toddlers and preschoolers and no money. Like, like it was a very uh, Charles Dickens like Christmas, <laughs> and so I I just prayed, Lord, you know, how can I get presents for my kids? And God said, What what kind of gift do you have that you can bring to me? Just like the, hey, how are we going to feed all these people, loaves and fishes kind of moment? And uh, and the apostles brought you know the lo loaf and bread, a kid's lunch, and Jesus said, I can work with that. And he lifted it up and he prayed and God multiplied it and everybody was fed. And so it was that kind of interaction with God. And um, I said, well, I do write a little bit. And he's like, there you go. Write a children's story. And so I actually wrote a children's story for my boys. And a part of it um, was affirmations. And we put each child in the middle of our whole family. I read the Christmas story. And then we blessed each boy. Everybody said what were the strengths. Um, we also gave that my uh, nieces and nephews that were there, what were their strengths, what are their giftedness, what are their skill sets, what are the attributes that we see that God put in their life to make them, you know, for such a time as this, born at this moment in history. And, you know, we put it on this little angel um, and we did that for each one of the kids. And my grandkids now pull out that little angel for their daddies. And that's one of the first ornaments that they want to put up. Like what was said about my daddy when he was four years old? And, you know, it, so what looked like was going to be bleak was a blessed Christmas, one of our favorite. And so let God multiply your fish and bread of this holiday season, maybe with something creative, maybe a Christmas that's very different than you've celebrated in the past. Let him add himself uh, to the mix of the merriment. What about people who are going through loss at Christmas time? I think that can also be a place where you've had bad news and you're struggling to find anything that's good news. What would you say to someone who's going through a recent loss or an imminent loss at Christmas time? Right. Hey, um, I'm walking one of my best friends through this right now. Um, she and her two sons and daughter-in-law and little baby have lost the patriarch of the family, a wonderful pastor, Pastor John. And they're looking at Christmas going, this is going to be a tough. It's going to be a tough Christmas. But some pre-planning has brought some hope and joy into their life. Like what were the favorite things of dad at the holiday season? Let's do some of those knowing that we're going to be grieving, but this will bring our dad right into the middle. This will bring my husband right into the middle of our holiday season. So instead of like pretending the pain doesn't exist or pretending the grief is not there. Walk right into the grief. Um, one of my dear friends, uh, I kayak uh, and we live on a boat. And so I love to kayak. And I was in Alaska one year and we were in the middle of a glacier bay. So there's icebergs all around. And the thing about kayaking in Alaska is if you fall out of the boat, you you have like less than 
three minutes to get back in the boat. I mean, it's like frigid waters, right? So it's like a little perilous. And so the wind whipped up and we're paddling right along and the wind whipped up and as one foot white caps, then two, then three foot white caps, like where you're missing the water when you're paddling. And my friend Deb, she gathered us all together and she said, here you go, girls, we got to get you to shore because we want you to live. And I raised my hand. I'm like, yes, I vote live. Live is a good thing. And and um, so she said, here's what you're going to do. You're going to put your bow right into that wave and keep paddling. Paddling is your stability. And I thought, I just learned a life lesson right there. Keep paddling. Put the bow right into the wave. And so put your, put your life right into that grief and plan what you're going to do to bring that person and their memory right into the moment. And whether it is, you know, placing that star atop and having a prayer gathering around as you're decorating the Christmas tree, just in honor of the person that you are missing this holiday season, whether it's going to that Christmas Eve candlelight service that was his or her favorite and making that a part of your holiday and take it, just taking Kleenex with you, knowing that it's okay that you cry and process your emotions this holiday season. Um, so with, whether it's pulling out your favorite Bible verses and sitting with his quilts on your lap and reading the Bible under the Christmas tree lights, plan a place um, for God to meet you in the middle of your emotions. And God will be faithful to do that. One of the um, one of the things that I had the opportunity to do when writing good new, discovering good news in John is I wrote um, the devotionals about who Jesus is, who like his titles, his names in the book of John. And he says that he is the I am. That means whatever needs we have. Jesus says, I am the answer to those needs. He's the son of God. That means he has all of who God is uh, in his hands and he can apply himself to our situation in our life. He's the bread of life. He's that nurturing, like we need him to our, for our sustenance. And he says, I'll get you through that. I'll feed you. He's the um, door of the sheep and he's the good shepherd. And I grew up on a Suffolk sheep farm. I know what it's like to be a Bo Peep. And God is a good, good shepherd to us, his little lambs. And he's the resurrection and the life. And, you know, sometimes in our Christmas and holiday season, we feel like we need our hope resurrection, our joy resurrected, you know, our finances resurrected. It feels like a death, like what needs resurrected? And he says, I am, I'll bring my power to this situation. And then the way, the truth and the life, uh, he'll make a way where there seems to be no way. He's the truth, whatever lies we're fighting, um, he'll bring the truth of his word. And it's like a balm of Gilead, a healing to our hearts and life. And that word is Zoe in, in the uh, New Testament. And that means all life that was created and sustained by God. And he can do that. He can sustain us. Um, and then he's the vine. Like I got to live six months working a vineyard. And God himself will be that life flow, that vine that we need in order to produce fruit. As we look to the new year, there's good news. God can produce some fruit and some um, blessings and some new hope and encouragement on the horizon. And then he's the light for that next step on our path. And then he's love. He proved he was love when he went to the cross, when he came down at Christmas as a baby and he left the glory of heaven to come down and give his life for us. He is love. And I am so enjoying all of that, all of the wonderful things that you have to say about discovering good news at Christmas. Can you tell us really quick where people can find you and discover more about you and get a copy of Good News in John? 
Uh, our ministry is love wise. We like to say we park ourselves on the corner of God's love and God's wisdom. And our theme verse is um, Proverbs 19, 8. The one who gets wisdom loves life. So you can find us at love-wise.com. Or you can just Google us. Uh, and you, if you put Pam and Bill or uh, waffles and spaghetti, we're the only ones that are going to come up with men are like waffles and like spaghetti. So you can find us easily that way or any on the online, um, you know, book distributors. I hope that all of you listening have enjoyed this conversation as much as I have. Pam is always a delight to have in my presence and on the show. And I hope, of course, that you will have a joy-filled Christmas and that you will come back for the next episode of Flourishment. <music>